Hi, I am James, a proud autistic Canadian, along with everyone at Autism Speaks Canada. I'm happy to present the third episode of Life on the Spectrum, where we share lived experiences of autistic Canadians and their families to increase understanding and acceptance. First, I would like to acknowledge the land. I'm on Treaty 6 territory, the traditional territory of Cree peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. Today's episode is focused on adulthood. We are in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and meeting my friends Aiden, Alyssa, Carter, and Justine. Aiden lives independently and plays in the band. He also teaches music to young children at his local music center. Alyssa is self-diagnosed. She lives with her partner and has a career in watershed management. She has sensory triggers and advocates for sensory-friendly spaces for everyday activities like grocery shopping, work, and social events. Carter is a graphic designer and a photographer. He also lives independently. Carter loves to travel and drive in his car to new locations. Justine is a talented artist. She loves to draw animated characters. Justine is a passionate advocate for equal employment opportunities for autistic Canadians. I am James and I live with my parents. I enjoy creative writing and working from home. Along with my friends, I want to highlight important topics like employment, housing, independent living, friendship, relationships, mental health, and more in this documentary. Let's join Sara from Autism Speaks Canada and my friends in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan to explore adulthood on the spectrum. What three words best describe you? Um, caring, passionate, dedicated. I guess mine was kind-hearted, creative, and smart. Awesome, thank you. I'll say it's... Stubborn, passionate, <laughs> funny. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, empathetic, uh, determined, and intelligent. Respectful, calm, and nice. Thank you so much. I agree. What suggestions do you have to build a more inclusive Canada? One of the things that I'd really like to point out is that we live in an age where visibility is increasing exponentially and visibility of like person first content, that's not something that we grew up with. So I would say just engaging with the different kinds of social media platforms where you can see people with autism speaking about their experience. For sure. Need it? Be more willing to just give people a chance in general. You might be surprised at what you see, that's all. I guess for me, I think it's better media representation and everything like that, like in the meet, like for a long time, like we have a narrow view of what autism is. And I think we need to eliminate those kind of representation and actually have more movies, more shows featuring like a realistic autism, like treat them like with not as like people to be pitied or like or special or anything like that. Like they probably best to like portray autistic as anybody else mm -hmm. and not and just all the stereotypes I think I think maybe have better mandatory educational programs about I meant about autism and not just in schools but I think employers maybe have it as like a mandatory thing to like get to know various people and know that it's a one not a one-size-fits-all solution I think if you have those educational programs plus at what Alyssa said about people talking about their experiences online, that can help make the world a more inclusive place, not just in Canada, but all around the world. Mm. Thank you. What suggestions do you have to improve employment for autistic people? There are programs and there's educational opportunities in place for employers on equity, inclusivity, you know, diversity, all of those things and a lot of employers don't take advantage of those opportunities the way that they maybe could. And I think that focus could be a lot higher. Thank you. Aiden? Be willing to be more forgiving of certain social difficulties, because that can kind of make a huge difference whether or not someone with autism is successful. Like, obviously, we do need to try to fit in as much as we're able to, but at the same time, sometimes things are just going to be more difficult and it's about being willing to understand when that does happen versus 
refusing to or making a big deal out of things that some people just find really, really hard. Maybe make it so people are more comfortable about disclosing to like potential employers and even make more inclusive programs, maybe even, I think maybe even programs to help autistic people find jobs that suit them and not just like one size, uh, not a one size fits all technique where basically would place any autistic people in any job and expect them to behave like that. What about like, what suggestions do you have to improve mental health for people with autism? Well, I think a good thing to do would be to maybe have cheaper services, I think for diagnosing people with autism. Um, I think that'd be a good step. I also, I also think having more support programs in place, maybe increasing the amount of money that SED offers, things like that, just helping people with disabilities more would be a really good thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing, Aiden. Help them find what they're good at and keep them doing that as much as they can. Well, obviously there's no perfect solution for this. Generally, people with autism, if they've got like a hyperfixation sort of thing, or they have like a talent they really, really got, generally they're at their happiest and healthiest when they can kind of just do their one thing and do it well. So it's about playing the strengths as much as you possibly can and trying to make sure they're allowed to and given the opportunity to do that. Any suggestions um, for, any suggestions to encourage independent living or housing situations for people? Well, I'm, the big thing would be reducing housing costs. I mean, I know everyone says that, but it is an important thing, especially for people with disabilities, maybe have some kind of system in place where there's a discount for people with neurodivergent uh, uh, mental health problems, just so, you know, they can, like, so they can afford housing too, because it might be more difficult for them to get a job. Mm -hmm. Like subsidize, subsidized living. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that would be a good idea. And, yeah. and especially especially for those on the spectrum, though, yeah. um, what what could take people like five to ten years to get a house could take somebody on the spectrum, like I did a rough estimate in my head of like how much money I'm making per year mm -hmm. with my jobs. It take me like 15 years. I'm just like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, policy needs to recognize that there are huge barriers to, uh, to employment for people with autism and policy is the way that we make things happen, right? So I think that if it's written into public policy, those barriers are recognized on that level, then that could help enforce more inclusivity in renting or access to housing and even employment. But also I think like when it comes to subsidized like housing, like what he said, I would also suggest maybe for like for housing like regulations like for autism i think they like rent should be on a sliding scale based on one's income mm -hmm. and not like this fixed rate of pay a hundred thousand dollars a month because like for example like on said that's pretty much your entire paycheck and you have no money for food and bills and i think a sliding scale system would would be more beneficial thank you i think i think maybe kind of like a trial program of affordable housing mm -hmm. Not like a not like a group home, but like get other people on the spectrum and see for a few months, see how it, how it works out. If it works out, keep going. If not, tr um, try again and try something else. I do like the idea of like maybe an apartment building complex for autistics. Like it'll just be like like any other apartment. It's not being like nothing like thing it'll be like more affordable maybe also supports when when needed supports when needed but yeah like what message would you share with another adult who recently self-identified or received a diagnosis what i would suggest is to never give up on yourself just because you learned you have a disability it's what makes you unique and it's not a roadblock never view it as such you know just push through and do the things you want to do to the best of your ability thank you uh, I was that adult not very long ago. Uh, so I would say first thing is, you know, like I said before, we're very lucky that we live in a world right now where people with autism are visible. So get on TikTok, get on YouTube, find neurodiverse producers talking about their experience. Um, and then my other thing with that is that the more that as someone who is really just a baby at learning how to unmask and who I am as an autistic person, 
Um, spending time with other people with autism is the best and healthiest and like nicest way to learn what you like who you are without your mask and how to take that mask off. So engage with those people. Engage with your community. Welcome to the club. Enjoy your stay. Might be a little bit of a bumpy ride, but there's a lot of good things that can come from knowing this about yourself. I would have to say... I would have to say you're not alone. I want to move on to the next topic okay. before we take a lunch break, okay. and that is about relationships or friendships. Right. Uh, we can break this section into two, like just relationships. I, I don't know how you guys feel about this, that we can cover relationships separately and uh, friendships separately, or do you guys want to do it together? We can do it both together. Yeah. 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 For me, it's been a really weird balance because I like, I had, growing up, I had difficulty making friends. Like literally, I, in elementary school, I would just stare at a wall and like, I didn't want to deal with anybody. And then as, like, when I got, I meant, like, what, during that time, my parents kind of said, okay, let's do the social groups, let's try and get you to call up friends at least once a week, because I remember, yeah. I remember, like, they gave us, like, a laminated sheet of all the phone numbers of everybody we went to school with. Yeah. And, um, parents pressured me a lot on that, but it got me to where I am now, where I'm building up all these friendships with yeah. all yeah, of yeah, yeah. When I was a kid, like, I was, like, bullied for, like, you know, I was, like, kind of bullied for my autism. Like, kids make fun of me, like, for how weird I was, like, for my interests and my taste of, like, shows. In terms of making friends, well, it all depends on the situation. Like, if I can be assured, you know, I'm in a place where I'm not going to be judged, I can just be myself and that's how it's going to be. I have no problem, like, trying to be friendly or make friends. The issue is more if it's in a place where it's very uncertain if I'm going to be kind of accepted as I am and I feel like I'm going to have to tiptoe around a lot of stuff and not be myself. I've always been very social, but since, like, uh, because of COVID allowing me to be at home all of the time and not have to be like so social like the way I felt pressured to before COVID um I've since pulled back a lot I used to have like a lot of social engagements and all these things and I don't know how I managed I would sleep for an extra three hours a day to make it all work uh but COVID allowing me to be by myself and recognizing how wonderful that was and how much happier I was and how much less anxious I was uh that was really helpful but I have always had friends. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And what about you? All right. Well, with friendships, um, I found I've had a lot of good friendships. Like, I used to live in Prince Albert, um, and I guess I felt like I didn't have a whole lot of friends there. Maybe they were more like fake friends, you know? Um, but then when I moved to Saskatoon, I started making a whole lot more friends. Like, I met Carter first. He was like my first yeah. friend. We, we, we did those social groups he mentioned um, together. So that's how I met him. And I met a bunch of other friends, too. Um, and over to, yeah, over time, like, I made so much friends and, like, real life, online, and just, generally, I felt like I've really expanded since I moved to Saskatoon. Um, as for relationships, sadly, I haven't had any yet, so, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> what are your hopes for the future? Well, my hopes are to, well, raise further awareness for people with disabilities and, and you know, just let people know again, that people with disabilities are no different than them, and also to, well, get ahead in my own life, um, accomplish more things, get more things written, um, become more of an advocate for people with uh, disabilities. Right. Yeah, um, for me personally, uh, understanding my needs, uh, knowing better and becoming more practiced at taking off my mask and advocating for my own experience and my own needs, especially uh, with my disability or with my sensory sensitivities, you know? So understanding what those are and how to ask for what I need so that I don't have to be like navigating an almost burnout 99% hmm. of the time. Uh, to be able to kind of get my life together totally, like it feels like with the current job I have, it's finally starting to happen, but it's more kind of seeing the little successes and everything I want and it's like, well, I don't necessarily need to be perfect at what I do, but it's about getting to a point where I can actually just do what I want and not need to worry about it not working out so much. Yeah. We'll say that. Thank you. 
My hope for the future is actually do something that gives me my life purpose, gives me meaning. I don't want to spend like my life just at home doing nothing because it seems like for the long time that I've been doing. I want to do something like I want to do like do something like. <laughs> sorry, I'm just my I'm jumbled, but yeah, I want to do make something out of myself. I want to do what I love. I don't want to just set just settle like I. Also, I want to have a little more money so I can actually do things I want to do and not have to live paycheck by paycheck and not worry what the future is going to be and how much worry that, like, if things go on, I don't want to be, be in, a, in a situation wondering where my next meal is because the st everything is so expensive I can only afford very little. And I don't want, I don't want that. Like, nobody wants I want to make the world a better place. What are your hopes for the future, Thur? I think my hopes for the future is to live the life that I want, be able to have equal playing field for not just people on the autism spectrum, but I meant but like everybody. Everybody. I meant fair playing gig. Um I hope I meant in the future to live a life I want where I can afford a house, I meant afford a family. Being a, I mean, be able to travel all over the world, which I've been lucky to, <laughs> and be be there for others. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for watching Life on the Spectrum by Autism Speaks Canada. We are committed to autistic representation at every level of development, production, and dissemination of the documentaries. We hope by sharing first-hand accounts of autistic Canadians, we can increase understanding and acceptance of autistic people, drive real inclusion, and inspire social change across Canada, help us create an inclusive Canada where autistic people can reach their full potential. Donate today at www.autismspeaks.ca donate.